Thank you, Speaker. I would like to also rise in support of this petition and thank St Vincent de Paul and all of those 13,000 people who signed this petition and acknowledge the member for Sydney who have brought it to the chamber today. It's incredible to see that we are here because we all want to see um, an end to the housing crisis in New South Wales and a recognition of the end to homelessness in New South Wales. But at the same time, it is very important to realise that while I take um, the, the previous members' calls for the support and recognise that Vinnies would like us to all work collaboratively towards alleviating the crisis that is occurring in homelessness and housing, that we are unable to do that while we have a Liberal national government in this place spinning the numbers numbers and claiming to deliver investment in social and affordable housing when we know that it is not at the rate that is actually going to solve the problem. As it currently stands, we have a um, hundred, oh look, you could probably say about a hundred thousand people on the waiting list, not applications, people, families, people that are approved to get into New South Wales public housing but actually are unable to do so because of the waiting list being so long and the fact that we don't have enough houses. Uh, with all respect, there are importance and value to street counts, but we know that you do not solve homelessness by counting people who are sleeping on the street. You solve homelessness by investing in and building social housing properties so that people can have a place to call home. We also know that the Communities Plus model that is being currently touted as the solution is seeing the wide-scale demolition and privatisation of public housing and public land across this state under the guise of investing in social housing, when in actual fact what instead we are delivering is not anything for the communities, it's all about the plus. The plus, which is the plus for the profits of private developers and investors that are going to gain from the large-scale handing over of public land and public housing to private developers for private properties. And you hear the numbers of increase that are spun. You hear that there are numbers of increases, the doubling or the tripling of the existing public housing dwellings, but they talk about dwelling numbers. They don't talk about bedrooms because what they're doing in the electorate of Newtown is demolishing family homes in Balmain, in the electorate of Balmain. And I heard the member for Maroubra talking about it the other day. They're demolishing good family homes that are currently public housing and replacing them with what? One bedroom, studio apartments, high rise apartments, high density apartments without the support. So where do all those families on the public housing waiting list go? Unclear to me, but they're clearly not being able to return to live in the electorate of Newtown because they're demolishing all of the good quality townhouses and public housing under the guise of a communities plus model, which is about delivering plus profits for developers, plus profits for investors, and nothing for the communities that need them. In addition to that, in these properties, what we are seeing is income by segregation by income that is suggesting that the private some of the private dwellings will be in one building and then the houses will be in the other building. This is a disgusting model of income Order. segregation that is basically entrenching disadvantage, that is entrenching disadvantage and discrimination against people that are poor in our city based on the idea of how this government is attempting to invest in social housing and deliver. What we need is real investment in social and affordable housing. We need a genuine commitment to the idea of investing funds, not some profit-driven motive that will see a cost-neutral return where there will be actually no money spent in the long term and the privatisation of public land along the way. We need to see a genuine recognition of real investment and I acknowledge that the people on the front line of these services like Vinnie's see the crisis every day and I am not going to be satisfied with a spin from any minister in this place that attempts to take up some new model that says that by building more overdeveloped and high density public housing in our electorate or across this state as a way to be able to solve this housing crisis when we know full well we need new housing, not the demolition and the destruction of existing public housing to solve this problem, that that is the solution. The final thing I will say is this. We know, and every member in this place knows, that there are people that are desperate that are currently on the high priority waiting list for housing in New South Wales. I don't know about you, but I've got people that are on the high priority list that have been on that list for sometimes five, sometimes two years, sometimes three years, sometimes six months. Now, if someone is in crisis and they are high priority, I don't think anyone would think that waiting for housing for six months or two years or three years is actually high priority. I would say that it is a failure of this government to deliver. And if we are in here to do one thing, surely it should be to deliver safe, affordable, habitable and secure homes for the people of New South Wales.